During the summer of 1972, tests were carried out by the Royal Netherlands Navy and the German Armed Forces to demonstrate the performance of the anti-aircraft tank radar system against targets flying very low over both sea and land. The land trials were held at an army test range in West Germany. For the tests over the sea, the AA tank, together with a mobile test station, were located at the Nieuwehaven Den Helder. The Nieuwehaven naval base at Den Helder provides an ideal environment for these tests. A dense and varying clutter pattern was obtained due to the dikes, jetties, the Isle of Tessel, offshore drilling rigs, busy shipping traffic, etc. In order to determine the all-weather capability of the AA tank radar system, the tests were performed under both good and bad weather conditions. At the time this was filmed, the weather was rainy with wind speed 45 kilometers per hour and sea state 4. A TV camera was mounted on the tracking antenna of the tank. This camera was connected to the monitor and a video recorder located in the test vehicle. During shooting of the TV picture, target range and time of flight were recorded to enable subsequent presentation on a monitor picture for evaluation purposes. For the tests over the sea, a Learjet served as target. This aircraft is known to have poor radar reflecting characteristics. The target speed was 450 kilometers an hour. During the first recorded run, the aircraft is directly closing at an altitude of 150 feet. The TV camera, mounted on the tracking antenna, at a height of 10 meters above sea level, recorded these shots. Target range is shown in tens of meters at the bottom right-hand side of the TV screen. Two adjacent lamps, marked X and K, indicate the tracking mode of the radar, that is, 3 centimeters, X-band, or 8 millimeters, K-A-band. The black circle shown during tracking in the KA band represents the antenna beam width of 16 milliradians. The same reflector is used for the X and KA band, the beam width for the X band being 75 milliradians. To assess tracking accuracy, a grid with a mesh width of 2 milliradians is projected on the television screen. Alignment distance is 3000 meters. Time of flight is indicated at the bottom left-hand side. During this closing run, at 75 feet, the KA band radar is deliberately switched off in order to demonstrate the tracking accuracy for a target being tracked by X-band only. The image effect is clearly noticeable. It is obvious that under these circumstances, with targets flying at such low levels, fire control with X-band only is most difficult. During the following run, the aircraft is at a minimum altitude of 20 feet, with a KA-band radar switched on once again. Signal to noise and signal to clutter ratios determine the instant at which the integrated radar system automatically switches over from X to KA band. 
It can be seen that the unique combination of X-band and KA-band radars in one integrated system effectively solves the problems arising from image effect. Note the smooth tracking performance of the turret. During the last run, the aircraft performs a passing run, crossing as close as possible to the tank at a minimum altitude approximately 20 feet. Automatic switchover from X to KA band starts earlier since the target reflecting area during a passing run will increase with respect to the reflecting characteristics of a head-on target. The trials over land were held at an army test range in West Germany using a Bell UH-1D helicopter as target. During these runs, the target was continuously tracked in KA band. The radar system is here confronted with a so-called pop-up target, which you will see appear out of the valley behind the tank and fly over the treetops in the center of the picture. Lock-on is performed in only three seconds. The range to the target in tens of meters is projected into the monitor picture at the left. The time is recorded at the right. Each step represents two seconds. Now the same helicopter will use a significant tree as a cover for his attack. The radar system picks the target up and within three seconds lock-on is accomplished. Also here, tracking is performed in KA band. This integrated radar system has been developed and manufactured by Hollandse Signalapparata BV.
These pictures show a few results of the comparative trials of the radar systems for anti-aircraft tanks type 5 PFZB, German version, recognizable by its big high search antenna, and type 5 PFZC, the Dutch version, having a low and narrow search antenna. The test site lies in Greding in South Germany. The two tanks have a fixed test position. Both radar systems are simultaneously ordered by the test center to acquire the same target. In many cases, the target is already visible on the scope. With a few helicopter flights, the target first had to be detected. In all cases, it was required that the target, after having been acquired, was automatically tracked for some seconds within given limits of accuracy. The use of optical means was not permitted. Fiat G91 jet fighters, flying at a speed of 170 meters per second, and a Bell UB-1D helicopter, flying at a speed of 50 meters per second, or 10 meters per second, served as targets. The trials have been divided into two main groups. The first group concerns the detection capability and threat evaluation and is related to the search radar functions. First, a comparison was made between the coverage diagrams of the two search radars. As a measure, the number of target echoes or blips per unit of time was taken. There is a marked difference between the silhouettes of the two antennas. The rotational speed of the C antenna is higher. The C tank is at the right-hand side of the picture. With all measurements, zero points represent the minimum possible score. The group of trials concerns target tracking capability and possible time of fire and is related to the tracking radar functions. The following pictures clearly show the difference in reaction time, which was also demonstrated during preceding trials. The B system is on the left. In this case, the reaction time is defined as the time between the moment that B and C receive the target takeover command simultaneously till the moment ready to fire. In reality and during firing practice, the first rounds are then fired immediately. So long as the controlled gun movement does not go off smoothly, the system cannot fire well-aimed rounds. The erratic behavior of the B system on the left is also caused by the image effect, whereas this phenomenon did not occur at all with the C system. These pictures show that also after a repeated target takeover procedure by B, the image effect may reoccur in the case of low-flying targets. The following pictures show the performance of the two systems when the aircraft makes a circular flight. The German B version is located at the right-hand side. Loss of target by the B system, shown by the deviating position of the guns and their erratic movements, was repeated a number of times. During this type of tactical attack, the B system encountered difficulties in acquiring the target again owing to the target takeover method chosen for the system and the short target range, which is approximately two and a half kilometers. The height of approach is 300 meters with reference to the tank's position. During the final part of this circular flight, the aircraft climbs to a height of 1,000 meters, which is followed by a dive attack upon a position a few hundred meters from the tanks. Also during this test, the negative influence of the image effect on the performance of the B system is remarkable. The test program includes, besides the measurements shown, an additional number of measurements on search and tracking radar functions, namely first pickup of target, lock-on probability, false alarm rate, and IFF.